okay, now let's talk about the association between two variables, the way that we can visualize the association between two variables and different ways that we can quantify it. For this, we're gonna use data file bottled water. So I have the data file here. We have two variables. We have the high temperature for two weeks, for two weeks in a row. Every day we have the high temperature and we also know the number of cases of bottled water that uh, have been sold in um, a convenience, convenience store, for example, at uh, Cal State, for example, Cal State University. So we want to see if there is any association, if there's any relationship between the temperature between the high temperature during the day and the sales of uh, bottled water, right? Uh, so the first thing that we need to do whenever we have two variables that we are uh, interested to see if they, they have any association uh, is to draw a scatter chart. A scatter chart is the tool that we use for uh, visualizing the association. For that, uh, you need to select both columns and then uh, we're going to use a scatter chart. But uh, when you're highlighting the columns, you just need to make sure that the first one is going to go on the horizontal axis and the second one is going to go on the vertical axis, horizontal, vertical axis. If that is not what you want, you need to uh, move the columns. You need to, for example, control X and um, here I want to put this instead of column B, I want it to be in column A. So I can click here, right click, insert cut cells. You see the that shifts the uh, column uh, uh, here, but I don't want it here. I, I, want, I want it in the original form, so I just put it back here, so now I have the high temperature and bottled water, which is basically what I had before. So I'm gonna select both columns. I'm gonna go to insert tab, and I'm looking for a scatter chart. Uh, here you see under the charts group, insert scatter or bubble chart. We're looking for a scatter, simple scatter chart here. And we're gonna go with the, with the basic scatter chart, no lines. That shows, I'm, I'm just gonna clean it a little bit, getting rid of the grid lines, adding access titles. And um, uh, that's it for now. Just let me just add. Um, so the, like I said, the horizontal is the first one. So the high temperature, high temperature, and here is the cases of bottle, cases of bottled water. All right, so now we have the graph, and this is how we visualize the relationship. Based on these points, based on these um, scattered points on this graph, on this scattered pl plot, we can see that there is a linear relationship. Uh, there is an increasing relationship between X and Y, between the high temperature and the cases of bottled water sold. All right, so there is a linear relationship. Uh, that's, that's what we see, that's our conjecture. But if we wanna um, uh, basically support that observation, if we wanna quantify it, um, we're gonna use covariance, we're gonna use correlation. But uh, bef before moving to uh, those computation, I'd like to do something here that shows the type of relationship. I'm gonna add, add a trend line. You can uh, add it from here, trend line, or you can right click on these data points and add trend line, or you can go to design tab, add chart elements and uh, trend line. 
linear. Either way, it's, you're going to get the same result. But once you have the trend line, uh, um, it's it would be great if you can if you can go to the trend line options here. You just need to click on the trend line, go to the trend line option, and add um, add the uh, R squared and add the equation on the chart. Um, let me just make it a little larger and more. All right, so that shows us the relationship. So why the vertical axis is the sales of bottled water and X is the temperature, high temperature. All right, so that shows us uh, the, there is a positive relationship. There is a positive slope. Since there is a positive slope, this, this, is, this is a trend line. This is the line that kind of summarizes this whole uh, scatter chart. And we can see that there is a positive uh, positive slope and positive slope means that there is an increasing relationship there's a positive relationship as temperature increases sales of bottled water increases uh, and as temperature increases by one degrees Fahrenheit sales increases on average by 0.67 uh, cases uh, of bottle uh, of bottled water, so this is basically the per uh, increase in the sales per unit of increase in temperature. All right, so that that's that's basically the uh, visualizing the association, and this is a little bit about how to quantify, how to support our observation. I'm just going to talk about two measures of association, the first one is covariance. And uh, covariance is, uh, is like a measure for showing the linear association. Covariance is the average, is the average of uh, multiplication or product of deviations from the mean at the vertical, at the horizontal axis, and at the vertical axis, the product of these two, the multiplication of these two for each point, and then take the average of those. That 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 is the definition of the covariance. Again, you don't need to um, you don't need to really uh, work with these formulas as long as you know them, as long as you know uh, where to find them. That's fine. Uh, but when it comes to Excel, you just use the uh, function the ex, the covariance the covariance function for that, but again, we have depending on the population or sample, we have two formulas. We will have two formulas for covariance. Let me just get here and find the covariance. Covariance. Covariance, and again, we have dot p dot sample. Again, this is a sample array one, variable one, array two, variable two, the second variable, and so on, and enter. All right. So that's that's how we get the covariance. That's how we find the covariance. Next one, next measure would be the correlation. And correlation is, uh, correlation is a standardized, a normalized version of the covariance. If you just take the covariance uh, between X and Y and divide it by the standard deviation of X and the standard deviation of Y, it'll give you the correlation coefficient. It, give, it gives you a coefficient that is called correlation coefficient. Correlation coefficient is a much nicer measure 
than and is a much easier uh, factor than uh, covariance because it gives us um, uh, a lot of uh, it's it's a much nicer because it, it there is a range and there is a range of minus one and one that correlation can change between these two values and it'll give you it, it gives it a, a lot of power in terms of the interpretation it gives it uh, a lot of simplicity we'll we'll see in a bit so this is this is how you get uh, this is how you find the uh, basically the correlation by dividing covariance between x and y uh, dividing it by <clears throat> standard deviation of x and y but when it comes to excel the formula is corel corel of again array 1 comma array 2 that's it so 93 correlation 93% is the correlation between x and 1 which is pretty strong. So correlation can take values between minus one and one, like I said, minus one and one. <clears throat> correlation has, shows two things. When we are going to comment on the relationship between two variables, like here, we need to comment on two things. The direction of the relationship so direction of the relationship and the strengths of the relationship. So di uh, direction, you can look at the, uh, I mean, when, we, we're, when we're talking about direction of the relationship, we want to know if there's a positive or negative relationship. We want to know if X increases, Y increases or decreases, right? So that, that's what we are looking for, positive or negative. How do we know that? Its direction is the same as the sine of slope, is the same as sine of, sine of correlation coefficient. So if the correlation is positive, it means that there is a positive correlation. There is a positive relationship between X and Y. If slope is positive, there is a positive uh, relationship, right? Uh, so that's, that's one thing. So we have to think of correlation, direction and strength. So that's one thing. The second thing is the strengths of relationship. And for strengths, we look at the value of correlation. If the value of correlation, the absolute value of correlation, absolute value of correlation, as it gets closer, uh, I mean, let me just first define it. So when we are talking about strength, it can be strong or weak or poor, right? <clears throat> weak relationship or strong relationship, and how do we uh, measure that? By the absolute value of correlation here. Absolute value of correlation. If the absolute value is close to one, here we have it. If, so this is about the direction and in terms of the size, in terms of the size, as you can see in terms, uh, as it gets closer to one or minus one, it, it's, there is a stronger relationship. Here we have it. The closer the co coefficient correlation is to plus one, the closer uh, those values are uh, actually following the uh, line, the stronger the relationship is the closer the correlation coefficient is to minus one, the closer the X and Y values are forming a straight line, meaning that the, relation, the linear relationship is stronger. So uh, let me just uh, add it here. The strength, strong or weak, absolute value of correlation. Absolute value, as it, as it gets closer to one, the relationship, gets stronger. 
as it gets close to zero, the relationship becomes weaker. And actually when the correlation is equal to zero, it means that there is no linear relationship. That's, that's the only thing that it can comment on, the linear relationship. There might be some nonlinear relationship, but correlation only, the relationship gets weaker, right? So the correlation only comments on the linear relation that can help us to identify linear type relationship. Anyway, um, one thing that I added here, uh, R squared. R squared is the coefficient of determination. We will talk about it later in this course. R squared or R squared, I mean either way, R squared or coefficient of determination. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna go through the, um, the detailed definition of R squared, but when we have simple graphs like this, X and Y, R squared is actually uh, when we have uh, a simple regression line or simple trend line like this, X and Y, two variables. Uh, R squared is the same as correlation squared. Correlation is squared, right? And as you, okay, so we just defined a correlation to be uh, the sign of the correlation to help us to identify the direction of the relationship. The value of correlation helps us to identify the strengths of the relationship. Therefore, correlation squared or R squared, it doesn't tell us by itself, it doesn't tell us the direction because it, it's always positive. Correlation squared is always positive. It's always between zero and one, between zero and one, always. But it just helps us to understand the strengths of the relationship. If it gets close to zero, it means there is no linear relationship. When it gets close to one, it means that there is a perfect, um, I mean, when it gets closer to one, the strengths of the relationship increases. At one, we have a perfect linear uh, relationship, meaning that all these points fall on exactly on, on a line, on a straight line. But that's not the case here. But uh, we have 87% coefficient of determination, which is huge, which is great. And as you can see, we have 93% correlation here. So that's, these are basically the um, <clears throat> basic tools that we can use for identifying and characterizing the association between two variables.